Hi, my name's uh, Zarina. Um, I'm here to speak to you today about global commoning uh, and post-border solidarities through fractal commoning. And I am going to speak to you about um, some uh, nested overlapping uh, intentional communities that are intending to uh, maintain and diversify the commons. So I'm going to talk to you about the Embassy Network, which is a global uh, network of place-based communities, and Hate Street Commons, which is a local uh, network of intentional communities in the Bay Area in uh, San Francisco in the United States. So here you can see a sort of uh, cartoon, this is not real, the, the names have all been changed. Uh, on the left you can see a, a global network which is Embassy Network and District Commons. So this is a sort of global federation of locations spread across the world. Um, that are in collaboration and uh, experimenting with new forms of, of governance and commoning. And then on the right you can see H3 Commons, which is our local federation in, in San Francisco. So you can see that this is quite a diverse uh, and widespread uh, ecology. Here we have some uh, documentation of the different kinds of um, domestic and sharing relations that happen inside these um, community houses. Uh, so in the top right we have these scales of sharing that span all the way from the individual to these sort of subunits within the houses up to the household, so houses tend to share food. Uh, and then the local federation there is sharing of uh, sort of basic equipment like cars, boats, trailers, uh, garden things and uh, legal, legal tools. And then at the global federation um, sharing is a little bit different. You can't really share a car across countries, but you, you can share information, you can share money uh, and various other things, sources uh, through digital platforms. So here you can see all the scales of sharing. Bottom right, you can see the different ways that these uh, layered and nested uh, communities com communicate. And uh, in the next slide, you can see uh, we've tr tried to map out some of the different ways that uh, these different communities uh, and commons based projects um, approach uh, decision making and there's a multitude of different ways uh, different community houses uh, use different decision making models and I can't go through it all now but you can see that there's various forms whether it's democracy or a dictatorship um, or various kinds of other decision making structures at play here and these documents are all <coughs> freely available for anyone who wants to see them uh, so I want to touch on the idea that uh, our physical spaces and our digital spaces are uh, overlapping but distinct and there are uh, really rich sort of um, commoning going on both in our physical and digital spaces. And of course, um, as, uh, as we <clears throat> try and get past COVID-19, um, I think we're going to find ourselves building uh, our communities online more and more. <clears throat> and I hope that that's something we can do coming out of this conference. So for our communities, we use a platform called Slack, uh, where we have maybe 20 community houses all on this one team. And uh, you can go and visit the different digital communities. Um. So the idea that I really want to sort of depict here is that we have these partially overlapping fractal nested both local and global networks of spaces that are all experimenting with home culture and commons and um, the idea here is that that most of these houses are experimenting with different forms of surplus to create experimental societies and leverage <coughs> the kinds of change they might like to see in the world <coughs> So uh, we uh, b both explore prefigurative politics, that is living out the kind of um, world that we wish we had starting today in our homes. Uh, transfer cultures, which is experimenting with and building the kinds of processes, decision making and social tools that we need to get to the new world. And autonomous zones, so these are spaces where people self-govern and uh, generate the, their own tools for, for their own governance. Uh, in order to live by their own values. And I think all of these things are embodied in these um, intentional communities and commons-based projects. So one of the theories of change that, uh, that some of the houses have adopted is that uh, by living together, you garner some surplus um, uh, and three forms of surplus primarily uh, that we can use to um, enact change in the world. So living together is often financially 
efficient and so by coming together to live together and create a commons we have um, a surplus of financial resources and the same goes for time so participating in a communal space and living in a domestic communal space is extremely time efficient and uh, you you know one person orders all of your food um, rather than all 20 of you ordering your food or going to do your grocery shopping separately and so you save a lot of time and this is this is a resource that you get to go and be of service uh, to the world uh, and then the last one is space so uh, you know if 20 of us all had our own homes uh, we would have to have 20 kitchens and uh, 20 garages and all that sort of thing and um, and through living together uh, we actually get a huge amount of surplus common space and this is also a resource that we uh, choose what to do with and uh, many of our community houses run free events um, which are really sites of cultural commons uh, these are almost entirely free events that anyone can come to um, any given night of the week there tends to be a lecture or a salon or a music event or a poetry reading or an emotional support group and um, this is a really sort of great example of uh, self valorization uh, which is you know creating uh, the life you need for the purpose of using it together rather than for for exchange uh, and for sale so these are three ways that um, the intentional communities generate surplus um, all of which uh, the residents living in these sort of commons based projects get to decide what to do with this surplus money time and space and uh, that's a talk for another day, but it's interesting to look at um, what is being done with those surpluses. So some of our hypotheses um, in these community spaces and these common space projects is that home is a site of personal and collective transformation. It is a place for radical experimentation with new forms of interacting, language, governance, economies and kinship. So these spaces um, constitute transfer cultures uh, that allow us to really explore why we're the way we are, the, the sort of norms and behaviours that we that we might want for, for a future uh, that we get to be architects of rather than, as I say, victims of. Uh, prefigurative politics, uh, so many of these spaces are sites of prefiguration um, and uh, these houses are trying to leverage the surplus they gain through living together uh, in order to be uh, of service uh, to society. And then lastly, um, this, is, this is a quote, um, seek, out existing, seek out existing alternative modes of self-provisioning and also develop new ones. Walk away from dependence on capital and the state, one step, one stratum at a time, whilst continually developing alternative practices and institutions to sustain the movement. So I'm arguing here that these commons-based projects that are exploring new modes of social logics and economic dynamics are actually a version of the slow motion general strike which is simultaneously exploring new ways of being and also withdrawing from default modes of operating. And I just want to touch on uh, a phenomenon that I see happening right now which is that as we can no longer travel uh, we're starting to see a bunch of our support groups and uh, emotional ecologies uh, move to online platforms. Uh, and in many ways, this is a wonderful thing because it's actually much more accessible. So we're starting to see uh, various events pop up uh, that are post-border solidarity-based events. And I hope that we will see many more of these uh, coming soon. So my hope in presenting uh, this, um, these projects to you all here today is to really think about how our commons-based communities can be in solidarity with e each other. Uh, so uh, how, can, how can these community and commons based projects in the Bay Area and other parts of Europe be in collaboration and in affinity, affinity with commons based projects in Africa? Uh, some of the suggestions I have is for us to come and stay with each other. So one of our hypotheses is that density breeds collaboration. Uh, we'd love to invite people to come and stay in these, com in these commons based projects um, in the Bay Area if that's ever possible uh, in a world of um, in a post COVID-19 world. Uh, second of all, collaborate. So for us, joining our community and joining our network is a side effect of doing. And I would love to open the door for collaboration um, with any uh, Africa based commons projects. Uh, please do reach out. 
and then lastly uh, I think being in a shared online community is a really great way uh, to be in uh, solidarity and to start building relationships uh, across continents um, please do reach out my emails below and I uh, hope to be in touch with some of you soon <laughs>